Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns. Welcome to this episode of the Brutal Truth About Sales and Selling podcast. Today we got a listener on, a listener who has actually taken some advice from me uh, and got Nudge, nudge Nudge.ai. And there he's actually selling an AI application to legal firms to basically take uh, the discovery process, you know, all those books or boxes of documents that you see in the movies that, that lawyers throw at each other. Somebody has to like read every one of those documents and index them and try and find meaning and reference to them and basically turn it into evidence. Now, guess what? (laughs) That's not a lot of fun work. So what a great application for artificial intelligence. And Mark McDonald's joining me today. So he's going to take me through how he closed a million-dollar deal based off of watching his market, finding out the relationships that he has within the account, talking to them about what they care about based off of the information that Nudge.ai has got, given him. So this is kind of a little bit meta in and of itself in that uh, people who listen to the podcast use the products that I use to crush my number, to watch my market, to come up with information that my clients and my prospects care about and start the conversation with them and the actual results. It's great to hear it from someone other than me. So we're going to get into that. And Nudge is offering up one free month with the Brutal Truth coupon. Brutal Truth, all one word, no spaces in it. And you get one month for free. You can start doing this on your own. See if it fits your market. Uh, anybody who's on the internet or their, their clients are on the internet, it doesn't have to be on any particular social network. Anybody who shares content will start to see how they're connected with all their total addressable market and find out what the people care about. So we're going to get into that. At the end, I'll give you an update on the courses. Uh, if you want to get a nudge course, it's free at b2brevenue.com under training. Click on the training tab and look at the courses, how I I use AI to crush my number. The coupon code is Nudge, so make sure you put that in before you hit submit. Uh, it's regularly two fifty. I'm giving it to my listeners free with the coupon code Nudge. So to get the brutal truth uh, coupon, that gets you Nudge AI, the actual product for one month. I'd take the course first, or if you're ambitious, you can just dive right into that. That's it. Let's get into the interview. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us today. As a way of getting started, tell us about yourself. Well, thanks, Brian. It's great to talk to you. Um, my name is Mark McDonald. I'm the Senior uh, Vice President of Business Development uh, for a company called BIA, uh, Business Intelligence Associates. We're an electronic discovery and computer forensics service provider. So for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, you can either do what my mom does and say it's CSI kind of stuff, but it's essentially the helping attorneys uh, gather and analyze data throughout the life cycle of, of, of data when it comes to discovery and court cases and investigations and regulatory matters. So that might not have helped at all, but there you go. <laughs> Sounds like something easy to sell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incredibly easy. And yeah. plus, uh, my clients are all attorneys in our business, and this is throughout our industry. Yeah. Uh, so it's even easier selling to attorneys, yeah. Nice, Piece friendly people. <laughs> Don't care about details. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. No. no. And always have plenty of free time to talk to salespeople, I bet. You know, it, it's one of the big challenges, you know, because our buyers can be, again, we talk about complex sales. And this is one of the things that I'm always listening to your podcast and picking up um, <clears throat> as a sales manager and a person who's spent many, many years in this industry specifically and over 20 selling. Um, it's always about creating some type of relationship. It's this. Uh, you know, finding the right time because attorneys are getting paid by their clients to yeah. practice law, not necessarily talk with a vendor about, you know, collecting data, which is a really important part of what they need to do, but it's only important when they need it. So figuring that time out is really part of the recipe. That's it. And when people are billing by the hour, uh, there's no number for salespeople, right? They there's no client to bill that to. Exactly right. And look, we work in an industry that's super competitive and there's a lot of VC money coming into our industry right now, and this, this happens, you know, in, in technology and services. Um, <clears throat> we're on the radar. So there's lots of um, uh, buying of smaller companies. This mid-market is becoming really hard to compete in. Uh, there's there's, there's this very large companies in our airspace which are uh, merging together. You know, commoditization, driving down pricing. 
Um, so it's 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 difficult on on many many levels. So I I don't know a whole lot about that space, but I've. I've uh, unfortunately have been gone through discovery before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, right? Yeah, and it, it's an arduous, time-consuming, uh, detail-focused process. And what I'm hearing a lot is that it is going to be either augmented or automated through AI. Is that what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we <clears throat> our goal is to bring the best tools to our clients uh, and know what those do. So there are a lot of great tools in the industry that we use. Uh, in fact, one of the latest and greatest is something called BrainSpace. So BrainSpace helps us um, and helps the attorneys that are actually doing the review of all the data that we're collecting. Um, you know, use the human element because we're actually tagging documents, responsive, not responsive, privilege, privilege, whatever that might be. It takes that information from us, the humans, the experts, and then it feeds all these other unreviewed documents. And there's a lot of other tools that do similar things, um, but this one has this really cool cluster wheel where you can see your data and tap on one thing that might mean certain things because of proximity searching and conceptual searching. So we are certainly seeing, and by the way, when it comes to document review, one of the most expensive parts of this whole process that we do used to be full brute force, putting butts in seats, you hire a hundred attorneys, you pay them by the hour and off you go. Yeah. Super, super expensive. By using artificial intelligence and augmented technologies like this, it really reduces the, the spend. It forces us to be a lot more uh, efficient and, and leverage technology to be competitive in the market. So, you know, those people who don't adopt this kind of technology are really being left in the dust quickly. That's it. And actually, last night I was talking to uh, somebody who was encouraging their kid to go to uh, law school. And I was like, you might want to rethink that. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to study computer science. <laughs> because, yeah, because a lot of the entry level jobs are doing that kind of work. You know, organizing yeah. that stuff and sorting it and indexing it. And it's just brain numbing, time consuming work. It is. You have to really separate yourself from your com competition. Um, the people that, that work in our business, right? I'm a salesperson, so I, I am, <clears throat> I'm not a computer forensics expert, but I work with lots of them. These are people who are attorneys, technologists, who understand things like the GDPR, which is the new international data privacy laws. Um, so many nuanced things that go into managing this this data. Um, <clears throat> so there are there are no shortage of, of opportunities to make a mistake too. And you're only as good as your last mistake. And it's just you know it's mind numbing to think of of of, of uh, you know this entire process that I just made sound a little bit simple. Collect it, you analyze it, you review it, you process it, you produce it, right? Um, <clears throat> not necessarily in that order, but that's generally the things that we do. Um, so this, this really unique expertise is, is not unique to our company. There are people all over the world that have this expertise. So differentiating yourself, finding how you talk to them. Look, we use tools like, like Nudge, um, which, by the way, <clears throat> I learned of, of by one of your podcasts. We, we adopted Nudge. Great people, great team. Um, within the first 30 days of using Nudge, I sent the, the Paul an email over there and said, hey, we just landed a million-dollar deal because your technology bubbled up uh, 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 information about a case we didn't yet know about. We called our client. They introduced us. Ref the power of a reference, by the way, trumps almost every sales effort. So uh, one of the things that we do is a lot of r referral business. Anyway, this landed us a million-dollar deal because something got bubbled up to us. So we're always looking for different new ways to not only – create relationships with people but to strengthen them and it's one of the things i enjoy about your podcast quite frankly is is as a sales manager i always need to be um re-motivated right there can't have peaks without valleys and sometimes those valleys can last a long time so my job is to encourage my sales team to teach them to keep them fresh to keep them intrigued interested make sure that you know 10 people say no the next one's going to say yes possibly that's what drives us all as sales people am i right yeah and you know, I like it's kind of meta that an AI company is using AI to find customers and stuff. It's, but, but Yeah, it's but, crazy, right? It's That's a great it use of it because there's so much stuff out there and trying to find out how you're connected to people and what they care about and what can I talk to them about that's not about me and my product that I can start a, an engaging conversation with instead of the, the classic pitch. 
Um, tell us about your sales process, though. Yeah, the sales process, you know, it's, it's a multi-pronged sales process that we have. Um, and look, I have a team of, of you know, <clears throat> eight salespeople here. Um, I've got uh, junior salespeople and I've got very experienced salespeople, but at the end of the day, it's really the same process. We all need to find new sources of revenue, new streams for opportunities. We need to have a certain amount of opportunities in our funnel and march those through. We need to really, we have a lot of success because we sell both the corporations and the law firms. We have the most success when we penetrate an account. We know all the decision makers, the buying process. We understand what, what whether or not an insurance company might be tapped in to help pay the invoices. That happens a lot in our industry. They have, you know, error and omission, you know, insurance that covers some levels of, of e-discovery and, and, and legal bills. Um, all these things help us understand what their um, buying process is, but only not only that, look, I mentioned all these different things that we do in order to, you know, provide services to our clients. What is it they actually want, right? This is the big problem salespeople kind of forget to hone in on. We have so many things in our bucket to sell. What is the one thing that they want? Which yeah. tool are we going to take out of our tool chest? And make sure we're not selling outside the boundaries. Get that first win with them and then grow it, land and expand it. It's that, it's that simple sales process, right? But in the complex sales, and when we're listening to people, and again, happy years, and hey, they said they like this, they might like this, they gave us the opportunity to do a demo. Well, you know, let's make sure that we're qualifying them as much as they're qualifying us through the process. Um, and again, the foundational thing is that relationship. You know, do they know us? Do they trust us? Do they like us? Can we get some referrals in there? And then again, I use things like Nudge to make sure that, and LinkedIn, you know, of course, Sales Navigator, another great tool. How can we m bubble up our presence to the people that we that we want to buy from us so that we're not just direct hitting them with our phone calls and our emails, you know, uh, those other creative ways to get in their airspace, so to speak. And who are you trying to talk to at these law firms? Is it an operations person? Is it... Um... It's a great question. Depending on the size, depending on the expertise, depending on the the, um, the nature of their business, right? So um, these days we are seeing a lot of business coming from uh, the construction world. Um, construction plaintiff firms... Uh, is a big one because the, the boom in the construction industry, you look across the horizon, I live in New York City, it's a it's a landscape of cranes. We have an office in yeah. Denver as well. <laughs> Same, it's like, it's crazy. It's like they're taking over the horizons. Yeah. And, you know, there's almost no construction project that goes on. You think about all the things that go into construction, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the framework, the foundation, the windows, there's almost always some element of litigation that happens, and these are not small claims. They're sometimes multiple millions of dollars, depending on the severity of the, the you know, whatever the, the dispute is. Um, so in those cases, plaintiff law firm typically doesn't have uh, an e-discovery expert internally. Those are in-house at big law firms. And a lot of those big law firms are finding that their clients now are hiring their own internal e-discovery experts. So some of these clients have their own software, the ability to collect data, do many of the things that we do as an outside vendor. So we are competing, in a sense, against a law firm sometimes who wants this to work for themselves. Uh, in fact, that happens a lot in our business. So there's this coopetition going on, if you, if you will, you know, between us and law firms that we're both selling to, but also both of us are vendors when it comes to supporting that corporation. So there's this, again, very complicated or complex relationship um, that happens between vendor, law firm, and then, of course, the corporation. All these things come into play. So we really dissect the nature of, of what we try to do is sell directly to the corporation. And sometimes we can even leverage our, our law firm relationships to team up and then go sell to that corporation uh, hand in hand. And, and we find that to be very successful, too. So, again, always trying to discover new ways to, to team up to the least, you know, the path of least resistance to get someone to say, you know what? Yes. And then keep them happy. You know, client satisfaction is what keeps them coming back. My job, your job is to sell, 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 sell. And then our operations team really comes in to make sure that, you know, uh, we deliver. We, we make the sausages that we that you and I sold, you know. Yeah. And do you get any inbound activity? Is the, is the product well enough known for that? Yes. <clears throat> we recently, um, and look, uh, we recently um, onboarded a, a marketing and PR team. 
that we outsourced it. You know, again, we don't have the resources really to, to staff, you know, a five person PR team. Um, so we're very happy with that. We are now strategizing with them about um, inbound marketing, uh, creating content, having that content be delivered and then create inbound activities. So uh, we are still in the market. And, and actually, I'm checking out a couple of companies that you've mentioned. I won't mention them by name here um, about some of that. Uh, but look, to, to be able to build a proper pipeline, you need the inbound activity that just comes through, you know, the, the PR and the marketing aspect of your, of your, you know, organization. You need the direct outreach by your sales team, the referral business. Again, and multi-prong approach is, is how we maintain our success. Otherwise, if we're not attacking from every different direction, we start to see, you know, this this kind of um, uh, clients fall off, but there's nothing to come back and replace them. And look, no client, just for all the salespeople out there, just know this. You lose a client, a big client, it might be because of a merger and acquisition, they get gobbled up by somebody else who has the expertise that you're providing, another contract trumps yours. There, it, it happens. You know, nothing is forever. Certainly a client is not forever. It hurts when it happens. It'll make you feel better to go sell the next one. So, you know, all these skills that I try to keep my sales team um, fresh on all come into play when it's time to go out and farm our new business as well as kind of grow our current business, that 80-20 rule, right? Yeah. Now, on the corporate side, who would care about this? I mean, obviously, sure. they're, they're paying a ton of money. Ton of money. <laughs> on this is, as you, as you know, this is not cheap stuff. These are, you know, a legal department inside a corporation is a black hole. They're typically not making money unless they're their whole kind of uh, business model is to, you know, own a bunch of patents and then go and pursue or enforce those patents. In that case, your legal department might be making you money, but for most of the time, it's it's just, a, you know, a, a, again, a, a drop in the bottom line at the end of the day. So we talk to people, we talk to the general counsels, who usually defer us to the assistant general counsels, the AGCs, senior level attorneys who, uh, just by the nature of this, this gets passed to them, um, you know, hey, look, we need a vendor that's going to have to help us do this. Most companies really, unless they have experts on staff, they don't want to have to defend this process because if you, if it's garbage in, it's garbage out, and the courts don't like that, and there's all kinds of rules and regulations about how we should be touching and handling data to make sure it's defensible. So we, we also sell on the defensibility of our process, as does every other reputable company in our airspace. Um, the CFOs are a recent target for us, too, because they're the ones watching all this money leave. Yeah. So it's, sometimes it's the CFO that says, you know what, this is interesting. If you can save us a million dollars next year on our legal spend for doing the same processes and if you can do it better, faster, and cheaper, even better, usually we'll get a shot at the table. Now, the lawyers don't necessarily like that when the CFO says, hey, I found a new discovery vendor. Why don't you talk to them? Because they're scratching their head and saying, oh, well, my, my car needs some new brakes, too. Do you have anybody you can recommend for that? You know? <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know how that goes, My back's right? hurting. <laughs> you can do yeah. an operation at so lunchtime. You have to be strategic about how you get the introductions yeah. and make sure you're welcome. Nobody wants to go and, and, and go to a presentation, fly across country, drive across the city, whatever it might be, if you're not welcome there. So create that kind of um, that need, that want, that desire, that, that communication You know, uh, as you're kind of doing that multi-prong attack. Um, but anyway, it's usually legal department, sometimes a CFO, compliance, IT security, all those people could be potential buyers for us. And are people aware that this even exists? <laughs> That's another very good question. Unless you're a litigator, unless you're an M&A attorney, unless you're in the business, this is something that when I go to a cocktail party and people say, what do you do? Yeah. I'm like, oh, let me take a quick drink. Excuse me, I have to use the restroom because to try to explain it to somebody can sometimes, you know, it's it's uh, it's a great way to practice my elevator pitch, by the way, is to, is to try to tell somebody at a cocktail party what we do. Um, but but no, it's a, it's a mind-blowing thing to say. This is a multi-billion dollar industry already. It's grown by a few billion over the last couple of years because of the way and the size data keeps growing exponentially really kind of these days. And you talk about the Internet of Things. And I listened to a, a podcast, uh, it was a TED Talk earlier today, talking about the Internet of Things and, you know, how there's data in your car and your phone and your fridge and your, in your, in your Fitbit. All of these things have potentially information that could potentially be discoverable depending on the nature. Social media, forget it. I mean, we just we keep adding more information about ourselves, about our jobs, about things that could potentially be relevant. Our job is to go collect it all and analyze it. Um, so, yeah, this business it just keeps on growing, and more and more people tend to know about it. 
you know, we talk about the, the email server, right? With the emails that were wiped. Did I use a rag? Ha, ha, ha. That's our business. You know, someone had to go and take that server, restore it, search for deleted items. This is this is what we do. Yeah. Um, different elements of it, of course, but kind of all in the same umbrella. And that's it, because you see the scenes in the movie where the attorneys take the strategy of overwhelming their comp- undersized competitor with data. Yes, it's a, it's a strategy. <laughs> right, yeah, of course. It, 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 it's a strategy. Here's and the haystack, the, where's the needle? <laughs> right. Well, there's a couple ways to find that needle, right? And we talk about this. Needle's in the haystack. How do you get to it? Well, you can burn the haystack down, or you can use a magnet to go get the needle. Um, so, you know, that's one of our analogies that we use when the, the time is right. Um, but, you know, look, I watch CSI. They take somebody's computer, they do a few, a few keystrokes on it, and all of a sudden, boom, they've got the information. It makes me want to throw my TV through the window because it makes our clients think that this stuff is easy. Like, that's yeah. not necessarily the case. You know, this is, it's an art and a science together. And, and, and that's it. How do you prove it to them as far as that it works and how it works and what they can get out of it? Is there a long proof of concept phase? There, there can be, you know. Um, m- most of the people uh, that have to deal with this understand the basic elements and that at some point a company or a corporation can't do it themselves because it's voluminous and you don't have the right tools and technology, very specific tools that analyze and process this data. We deduplicate it. We look at threads of emails and chains so that we don't have to review 10 different versions of one email. Um, so, so we do... Um, and I'm sorry, bring me back to your question again. I kind of got off track myself. Uh, how do you prove do. that it works? And how do you prove yes. how it works? <clears throat> so, you know, in a general sense, we can show ROI based on the sheer brute force. Remember I talked about putting a bunch of people in seats to do yep. brute force doc review. Um, we can say, okay, look for a flat rate per document. We can use technology and use some human element and do that same review that you would normally pay hourly for, which is an open-ended check. We don't have any idea how many hours it's going to take. By the way, we live in an industry full of assumptions. You ask me for a proposal and tell me about five people's data to collect, okay, I'm going to assume this, assume that, assume that. Um, But it is a defensible process. Our job and our industry's job is to make sure that we can defend the evidential integrity of a document, a file. Because if you drag and drop a file from your computer to a thumb drive, even just that simple act, you change what's called the metadata about that file, the tentacles of kind of a, a jellyfish, if you can imagine these, this is what metadata is. The last time it was open, searched, filtered, uh, accessed, modified, created, these are all things that mean something to attorneys. Imagine if you're fighting a case and you see an email that says, oh, well, this guy looks like he might have created or submitted the file for this patent on this date, but it's a doctored email. We've, we've seen that actual example in cases before. We had to say, look, this is a fabricated email. The whole case is is based on this email that doesn't exist, and that's why you couldn't find it before. It's just not real, and pff, case closed. So, uh, so yes, the, the 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 forensic soundness of this process is it's it's fundamental and it's super important. If you don't do it right, the corporation is going to be in trouble, the law firm could be in trouble, and certainly the vendor could be in trouble too. So it does sound like very much a relationship, trust-based sale. Absolutely. Uh, and how do you do that? You can't do that in a cold call or a, a simple email. You have to build that up over time. Yeah, it's a long process to get into in, in, to somebody, you know, look, I say that, but at the same time, I could easily make a phone call and just catch someone on the right day and say, look, here's who we are, here's what we do, here's our expertise. The company has a nice long track record. We're 15 years old, which in our industry is actually a... a, a we're one of the pioneers in e-discovering computer forensics. There are yeah. a lot of other companies that have, are bigger than us that have you know, come and beca- in, in, in grown through merger and acquisition. Um, but really establishing credibility, being able to say to somebody, okay, look, um, however we make that first communication, blind phone call, meeting at an event, really um, <clears throat> putting ourselves out in front of people, I find to be one of the best ways. One of our things is educate them and they will buy. So we do what are called CLEs and lunch and learns, right? So attorneys always need these credits every single year to make sure that they're keeping their their, their license up to date. They have to go to certain classes, right? One of them is an ethics class, uh, ethics credit. 
um, we provide a, a webinar or face-to-face. -face. We show up, we talk to a whole group of attorneys, 15, 20, 30 of them in a room. Uh, we do a presentation that's worth their time and always comes with a great lunch and the face-to-face -face and the shaking of the hands. And what we find is that when you do that, when you make that effort, when you go on site, when you invest something, that people will call you. That you'll become a resource for them. They'll yeah. remember you that came on site. Hey, those guys seemed like they knew what they were talking about. They did a great follow-up for us. They left us tchotchkes. They left us something, right? We gave them some information. And then there's that follow-up, right? The cadence of how we connect with them. Hey, I saw your law firm just won a great case for this client. Hey, we've worked with that client before. Congratulations, shout out, you know, that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a much longer process than it used to be in order to get someone to that place where they say, you know what, I'm gonna call BIA today because I think this might be up their, their, their alley and they, they did a presentation on something similar to this. And, you know, the white papers, the, the now with our PR and marketing uh, team, you know, creating content, it's been another huge uh, benefit for us too. Um, before we had this really kind of grassroots strategy for growing, hardcore sales, right? Certain number of calls, this, that per day, that kind of old school methodology. We changed that process four years ago. Um, and it's been so beneficial to kind of have this, again, multi-prong approach using tools like Nudge and other things. And, and that's it because, you know, I use Nudge a lot looking for trigger events. You know, people having good quarters, bad quarters, introducing new products, funding rounds, change in leadership. Yeah. H have you used it for that? Always, yeah. They, you know, we find um, that it, it – if, if so Nudge, first of all, great tool, and you can – They've helped us build it into such a way where we have uh, different levels of clients that we're prospecting and watching, right? So we've got these clients that are on our hot list. We've got those clients that we work with. And we've got our prospective clients. And, and one of the quickest ways to lose business is to not know the changes that are happening at the highest levels of the corporation. Yeah. In our case, it's the general counsel, right? Because this general counsel could have come from another big company and had a great experience and lots of e-discovery experience. They come into this new company, one of the first things they say is, well, this is easy for me. Show me your e-discovery spend. How many vendors do you use? Sometimes a corporation can have 10, 15, 20 vendors because <clears throat> they're letting their outside counsel pick vendors here and there. So, so hey, look, I can consolidate these vendors. I can negotiate pricing across, you know, my top three that I'm going to keep. And then you're left out in the dark if you don't know that's coming. Um, so it's super important to be on top of the dynamics uh, of those relationships inside our clients, both the corporation and the law firm, in fact. And, and I, I got to believe because uh, the experience I've had with lawyers is that they all know each other and they like knowing each other. Yes. <laughs> yes, know? they are a tight group. And if you don't believe that, then uh, <laughs> be careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be careful. Exactly. They talk. They, they, they will ask each other about you know, resources, whether that's e-discovery, whether that's court reporting services, whether that's backup tape restoration, kind of, you know, there are so many industries that all support the legal world. It's kind of similar to the life sciences, the medical world, right? The, the pharmaceutical, and these are all, by the way, all have massive litigations and complex litigations, sometimes lasting for years. Um, so yeah, they, they rely on each other for, for information and for, you know, who does this best. And so, uh, you know, we're always looking to, to make sure that we're part of that conversation as well. And what separates your A players on your team from the B players? <clears throat> Wow, this is... Um, <laughs> Without mentioning is, names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, um, to use one of your words, and, and, and I listened to a recent podcast where you talked about A players and B players and C players and how you get the Cs to be Bs and the Bs to be As. Um, look, my team has As, Bs, and Cs. Luckily, we don't have any Bs or Fs. Um, <clears throat> and I think that each each of my salespeople has a, a, plays a vital role in my team. Um, so what makes an A player? Experience? grit. Um, I think grit and stick to is is one of the most um, important qualities of a good salesperson. Um, you need to be able to be told no, 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 all day long. The phone's slammed in your face. Don't call me again. And, and be able to come and do it every single day and know that at some point you're going to have a breakthrough. And that one breakthrough is going to be worth the, the 50 or 100 you knows you got. You know? And sometimes somebody will say no to you four or five times and eventually just say yes because you've stuck with them. You haven't let them 
tell you that they're you, they're not going to buy from you, right? Yeah. Um, and that's a that's a slippery slope. How to do that? Um, so the A players again, they know the product, they know the solution, they know the market, um, they know what people need before they walk into the meeting, right? They've diagnosed the situation. We already kind of know. Hopefully, where this meeting is going to go, where the conversation is going to go, or where this first call might go to get us to our, our next goal is. And we don't rush to a software demo. And in fact, one of the things that I, 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 I try to train my team on, and even some of the upper level management and the ex experts here at BIA, because when we show up to a meeting, we have so much information. Avoid the throw up and show up, show up and throw up, right? Don't show up and throw up, meaning don't show up. And we've walked out of so many meetings and high-fived ourselves and said, that was a great meeting. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear, like, every, who took good notes? Nobody took notes. We didn't have to. We excited. talked the whole entire time, you know? Like, yeah. that's not a good meeting. Um, so those A players know how to get people to talk, how to tell us what they want from us, yeah. and then we have to execute on that. And I think that's key from the sense I got just in this half hour with you is that each of these people, the stakeholders, have a very different lens on why they would do it. Some are financial, some are quality of life, some are winning the yes. litigation. Some, yeah. Yeah. Quality of life is a big one, too. I barely <laughs> yeah. touched on that one, but you're so right. If If you hire us... You can go to sleep on a Friday night and knowing that on a Monday there's not going to be a nuclear bomb waiting for you, right? That we've we've got it for you, and and it's not so easily said. Uh, and, and then and then to produce on that, but yeah, quality of life is a big one. Nobody wants to have to manage their vendor that they chose and then say, oh my God, what happened here? Like, how did you end up with this vendor? Like, oh, I took a shot with these guys. They had a great shtick, but they can't follow through on it. So yeah. the quality of life thing is, is hugely important. Right. Right. And, and, and you're talking about a profession that has uh, very serious um, lifestyle. Implications. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. If things don't go right, it means bad things for lots of people. Yeah, the yeah. reputation. It's, you can't hide in the legal field. You know, because everything's recommendations, references. Uh, yeah, and goodness forbid, like, you, you make a mistake. If you look back and do a Google search and just hit, you know, um, no. you know, privileged documents produced, you'll see the names of law firms, of vendors, and things that have made that colossal mistake. Um, and unfortunately, it happens. There's so many moving parts with what we do. Right. Mistakes do happen. Uh, and, you know, some of our, you know, uh, very reputable good companies have just unfortunately hit the wrong key at the wrong time. And, you know, you'll end up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. It's hard to recover from. But depending on the situation and, and the damage, uh, you know, in your relationship, again, you can overcome those things. Sometimes it's just like, well, oh, we'll put them on the do not call list for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, Mark, I really appreciate your time. Uh, for the people who want to learn more about your company, you, and what you're doing, where do they go? www.biaprotect.com. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn, Mark McDonald. You can search for BIA. I would love to connect with people. Um, and I would also love to hear from your listeners, you know, about what they're doing. And, uh, and again, you know, thank you for the podcast. I think that uh, really it, it, it helps me in so many different ways. And it was a pleasure to talk to you today, Brian. Hey, so here's my takeaways from that. One is that in certainly a lot of cases, timing is a critical element of sales. And there was a recent TED Talk that I watched where they said, about startups and the number one consistent thing that made a startup successful was the timing were they too early were they too late or did they hit the wave right at the right time and timing in life timing in comedy timing in everything is critical so how do we do that as salespeople we become known liked and trusted before the timing is right or when the timing is right Instead of trying to create the timing, creating the timing is just so hard because people are not sitting around waiting for us to call. If we get inbound warm leads, the timing is right. If it's cold outreach, we got to understand that the timing may not be right. You might find that it's right, but most likely it's not. So you either have to keep searching or 
build up that know, like, and trust stages through that process. And that's what my course is about. Start the conversation, get the meeting. How do you systematize that? How do you turn it into a scalable system that works for you in your space? Instead of this old school, cold outreach, hit them with a pitch, yes or no, and 99% of the time it's no, that's a grind. Why not do it smarter? And Nudge.ai is one of the tools that I use. It's critical for doing all that work for you, to find the A's for you, to have them surface and tell you what they care about. All, all together in a little email every morning as well as being able to open it up and see your network and how you're connected to people. You know, it's too hard to remember all these people because we remember the Dunbar's 150, but we don't remember all the people that they're connected to and how and what they care about because they don't care about us until we've shown them that we care about them. So I really enjoyed this interview. It was a lot of fun, and I really like when people embrace uh, new technology and apply it. Give it a shot. If it, if it works, you're just cooking like Mark is. If, if it's not your bag, then you move on to something else. But I hope you enjoyed that. And please make sure you're checking out uh, Nudge.ai with the Brutal Truth coupon. Uh, get one month free. The same is true with Pipedrive.com. Brutal Truth, you get one month free of Pipedrive. And you got to look at what they're doing as far as follow-up and filling in the contact information for both the company and the people and integrating it with your email. So cool. Also, make sure you're checking out the show notes for all the, the links to the partners. They're bringing out the best content. Uh, Gong.io just released a, a blog post on when you should use I versus we. It's very interesting. Uh, and I'll probably do an episode on that uh, if I can get Chris back on the podcast. I miss talking to him. That's it. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Make sure you're checking out b2brevenue.com. Get the free book on how companies buy, and you heard how Mark learned how companies buy. It's everybody cares about something else. It's all about finding that, finding that emotion that they care about, and then justifying it with logic.